in my eyes, I don't think Bass will ever be able to replace Mark Zona. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and let me just say thank you. Again, it's just been, it's it's overwhelming the amount of support. I appreciate everybody who watches the videos, the people who are interactive and comment all the time, and people who send me emails and video clips and all of it. I really do appreciate it. It's unbelievable, tumbling. But if you're not a subscriber, you should do yourself a favor and click that button because you should be part of the family. You, Tommy, Ronnie and Such and Dave and Dave, everything has has been my life, and it will be my life. Uh, I'll still be around. I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say right now. But I mean this sincerely. I want to say this. Thank you. Thank you for everything you taught me, and you made me a better person. All right, let's do a power pull replay of the day, man. Just do something <laughs> do right now. That's, um, that's it. Th I, I, I will still be a part of this company because this company means so much to me and this sport means the world to me. Thank you. There was so much drama and things that happened on the St. Lawrence River on the Bassmaster Elite this past weekend. But the biggest news of the weekend was that Mark Zona was leaving Bass. And in my eyes, I just don't think they'll be, I just don't think they'll be able to replace him. I don't know who they're going to replace him with, and I hope it's Davey Height because I think Davey is amazing, but those shoes to fill are outrageous and huge. Now, some background of Mark Zona and some stories at the same time. Mark was a fisherman and a baseball player, and he decided going through school, he had to make the decision which one did he want to do, he, and he picked fishing, and thank you, Mark, for picking fishing. After school and doing stuff, he was a division angler of the year up north in one of the leagues that he fished, and that's that shows the quality of the angler that he is. In 2004, he launched his show, Loudmouth Bass, and it was one of the first out there, if I remember correctly. I, that is the exact year that I had my first interview with him. Well, we had our first interview with him. We had the fishing show at that point in time, and we were making a decision to change. And that decision was to stop being more fishing report oriented and to try to do something where we talked to celebrities, where we talked to anglers and we heard their stories about how not only did they get into fishing or why they were fishing, but the fun stories of the drama that happens with being a professional fisherman or a celebrity. And during that time from 2004, 2005, Mark would sit down with us as a show one or two times a year, usually one time at the Classic, and then we'd always have him on in the middle of the year. He was always one of the best people to talk to. Now, he did dominate our conversations, which was perfectly fine, because you realized quickly that he was an exceptional storyteller, just one of the best, humble, nice people you'll ever meet in this industry. It was right around that time in 2005 that he started his show. At that time it was called World, I have to read it, World's Greatest Fishing Show, which was changed the way fishing shows were done. And having him on and pr him promoting his show and help promote us and talk to us about what was going on was one of the highlights of doing a radio show for almost 14, 15 years, whatever it was. 2005 was also a really big year for, for Zona because that's the year that he started Bass Masters with, with Tommy Saunders. It was called the Bass Master Show. It's now called Bass Master Live, but that was in 2005. And at that point in time, we got to see the brilliance of Mark Zona. It was not only the way that he communicated, it was the way that he talked, the way that he brought you into his stories and that you wanted to know more, not only about the story, but about the great man that, that he is. In 2009, he started the Zona Awesome Fishing Show, which was, it was awesome. The people that he has on the show still to this day, the things that the, they talk about, the camaraderie with the angler and the film crew as the show is going on. It is arguably one of the best fishing shows that's ever been produced and Mark is the center of it. It shows the greatness of Mark Zona, that he is that responsible, humble, and a perfectionist on making sure that he is not only the face of the show, but also just comes across as just being a real down-to-earth person. 
I can say without question, Mark has been one of the best people I've ever met in this industry. And I actually felt hurt on Sunday when I saw his video saying, or I saw on Bassmaster Live, him saying that he was gonna he was leaving. Because I know the passion that he has for fishing. I know the passion and the love that he has for the fans and the people that support him and his sponsors and everything else. And I just, it hurt me. Now, I've only known him for 19, 20 years. And in that time, there were many times where he would have to, we were at the Classic doing a live show. And he would show up to do the live show early in the morning on at Tulsa when it was 22 degrees or whatever it was. It, the boats were freezing. He would show up to sit down for 15, 20, 30 minutes with us. Or we were at media events 15 years ago for the Bassmaster Classic. And he would stop what he would do to sit down to film with us so that we could have extra clips of stuff to use throughout the year with him. He was always unbelievably giving of his time. I remember the exact, I don't remember the exact, we were in Tulsa, that's the best way to put it. And he had spent the whole day, the whole day talking about fishing live. He was at the one of the centers, the box center or something. And as he walked out, and we were in the media area and outside where the anglers were staging their boats to come in, I said, can I have can I have 10 minutes? He could barely talk. God's honest truth, he could barely talk. He was yelling at Davey for something to get in the car and Saunders to get in the car and stuff like that. But he said, of course, I'm a little hoarse. I don't wanna really talk right now, Steve, but dude, here, let, let me answer some questions. And it was things like that that he constantly did. If he saw, if I saw him at the Classic or if I saw him at iCast or I saw something, it was always, a, it's always a cordial hug, handshake, and how are you doing? How's the family doing? How's the wife? How's everybody? He is, he's just an amazing person. I am, I, it really does hurt for me to make this video because Bassmaster Live is not going to be the same without him. And I know he's going to continue to do great doing his show and doing other things. I have no doubt about it because the man's brilliant. But I'm not going to enjoy Bassmaster Live as much. And that's not a slight against anybody on there. I've interviewed Tommy a few times and everybody else. I think uh, Ronnie Moore is amazing. I think the whole crew is unbelievable. I think they're the best in the crew. I think Saunders and Zona are the greatest commentaries of all time. And I think they fed off of each other and were able to bounce things off of each other and could give each other a look and know, hey, it's your turn to say something. And to have that camaraderie and that that passion and also that trust that the next thing that was gonna come out of either one of their mouths was gonna be something that was a gem. And while there's probably a few people that don't like Zona, I don't know why you wouldn't like him. That's the God's honest truth. He's always been very cordial to all the fans, makes time for everybody. He is just one of the greatest people on the face of the earth. He was inducted to the Hall of Fame this year, which was just awesome. I couldn't be happier for him. And like I said earlier, I think he's one of the best storytellers out there and one of the best guys ever. And I don't know who they're going to be able to put in his place to replace him. The shoes are, they're shack shoes to fill. They're shack shoes and you're wearing, the person that's coming in is wearing a baby shoe. It's just something that, it's 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 too big of a shoe to fill. But I don't know who they're gonna to put in that spot, but I wish them the best of luck. And if it were me, it would be height for sure. I'd have Davey in. Davey's a great person, the one of the nicest guys too. And always giving and just, just a good guy, just a really good guy and knowledgeable too. So I don't know who you think, who do you think they're gonna replace with him? Who would you put in to fill the great, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. So comment below and tell me who you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. Thank you again for all the subscriptions, the subscribers, the new members. God, I can't even imagine. The members are, it's outrageous. And also the comments. You guys are killing it. So thank you. But comment below and tell me what you think. And I'll say it again. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers and tight lines.